Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Vans Aircraft expands operations to build the SLSA, RV-12IS, and RV-12IST. FAA grants TSO authorization to UAVionics for Skybeacon ADSB out solution. An oldest flying F-22 Raptor flies again. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's September 7th and this is Airport Unlimited. Fans Aircraft is establishing its own aircraft assembly facility and team at its company's headquarters in Aurora, Oregon. Future RV-12IS and RV-12IST SLSA aircraft models will be assembled and delivered there. Synergy Air has been Vans' assembly partner since the launch of the RV-12 SLSA program and as they continue their expansion into, an emphasis on, the Builder Assist Arena, the companies will continue to work together. But Vans will be producing the RV-12 IS family of SLSA airplanes at its factory facility going forward. Several years ago, Vans set out to implement a comprehensive SLSA program for the purpose of delivering the RV-12 as a ready-to-fly certified light sport aircraft that can be used by individuals in flight schools. Over the last year, that program has grown to include the next generation, SLSA RV-12IS, and most recently, the RV-12IST trainer aircraft. Vance does not anticipate scheduled delays as a result of the change in production staffing and location. Any RV-12IS currently in production with Synergy will be finished at Synergy's Eugene facility. Any aircraft not yet started will be completed at and by Vans Aircraft. Vans anticipates delivering aircraft that are already on the schedule on or before the estimated delivery dates, previously communicated to individual customers. After the break, Buzz Aldrin slams First Man Movie. The dream is real. A truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics personal jet kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unman, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-by at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. You've probably heard about the controversy surrounding the upcoming movie First Man, which tells the story of Neil Armstrong, the first man to set foot on the moon. To recap, actor Ryan Gosling, who plays Armstrong, said that the decision to eliminate a scene showing the planting of the American flag on the surface of the moon is appropriate. Buzz Aldrin, who followed Armstrong onto the lunar surface, thinks otherwise. He recently posted historical photos of the flag planting with a hashtag, proud to be an American. Paramount Studios has delayed the release of Top Gun Maverick until June 2020. Early production of the movie began this spring and is now set to resume in September. The studio said in a statement that the extra time will be used to work out logistics for presenting flight sequences using new planes and technology. For the third time in a week, Airbus Perlin Mission 2 set a new world altitude record for a glider, this time soaring the engineless Perlin 2 to 76,124 feet, in the process collecting vital data on flight performance, weather, and the atmosphere. The September 2nd flight by pilots Jim Payne and Tim Gardner surpasses even the maximum recorded altitude and level flight of the U.S. Air Force's famous U-2 Dragon Lady reconnaissance aircraft, 73,737 feet, flown by pilot Jerry Hoyt on April 17, 1989. 
Students and faculty are invited to the 2018 Careers in Business Aviation Day on Thursday, October 18th in Orlando, Florida during the annual MBAA convention. Each year, MBAA's Careers in Business Aviation Day features a general session featuring an inspirational keynote speaker, followed by a tour of the exhibits, giving students an opportunity to see aircraft up close and ask questions. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The FAA has granted TSO authorization to UAVionics for a SkyBeacon wingtip mounted ADSB out solution. The SkyBeacon integrated solution consists of a total of five TSOs. SkyBeacon has already become popular in the experimental and light sport aircraft categories and is expected to be hugely popular in the certified aircraft market too noted Ryan Braun, UAVionics Chief Operating Officer. Its speedy plug-and-play installation provides the lowest total installed cost of ownership ADSB out solution on the market. The addition of an altimeter late in the certification process introduced a small delay in the certification timeline. The additional component makes the SkyBeak enable to address a larger range of aircraft, specifically those with an existing MODES transponder. It allows SkyBeacon to provide pressure altitude to surrounding traffic and ATC, regardless of the radar coverage, he added. STCs for multiple Cessna and Piper aircraft are expected within just a few weeks, at which point UAVionics will begin shipping pre-orders. The STC data and installations satisfy FAA requirements and will enable subsequent SkyBeacon installations to be performed on any suitable aircraft, without an STC as a minor alteration. After these messages, Aldis Flying F-22 Raptor flies again. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. A phoenix is an extraordinary bird that is born again rising from the ashes of its predecessor. A video aptly titled The Phoenix Rises was shown at Edwards Air Force Base to celebrate the rebirth of one of the original F-22 Raptors ever built. The 411th Flight Test Squadron and F-22 Combined Test Force, along with Lockheed Martin and Boeing representatives, welcome back to life Raptor number 91-4006, which has been grounded for almost six years. The fighter was one of the first F-22 Raptors to have avionics installed for testing and has been at the 411th FLTS since May 2001. However, in November 2012, Raptor 4006 needed a costly upgrade and the decision was made to put it into storage, possibly never to fly again due to the budget sequestration at the time. After getting approval and funding from the Air Force to overhaul the Raptor, a purple team of Air Force, Lockheed, and Boeing personnel worked for 27 months at Edwards to restore the jet back to flying status. This included 25,000 man-hours and almost 11,000 individual fixes and parts. The completed refurbishment extends the Raptor's life from 2,000 flight hours to 4,000 and gives it upgraded avionics. Raptor 4006 is currently the oldest flying F-22. It will now be used as a flight sciences aircraft, which will be an integral part of the F-22 fleet modernization. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. 
Have a great weekend and see you Monday.